So I ran a poll on the YouTube community tab asking, glasses or no glasses? I kind of don't care, but people seem very vocal about it. And the vast majority said, yes, Phil, more glasses. You're better with the glasses. Which is why I'm not wearing these glasses. At least today, even though they make my eyes feel generally better throughout the day, because I'm not your dancing monkey. Unless a very large number of you hit that like button, in which case I will dance. <laughs> you should probably not include any of that. That's, I feel like that's kind of just, it's stupid. Sup, you beautiful bastards. Hope you have a fantastic Thursday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show, and let's just jump into it. And the first thing we're gonna talk about today is the youth, TikTok, and activism. And this story actually starts with teachers in Clark County, Nevada. They reportedly plan to walk out on September 10th to protest against the school district for failing to honor a promise it made regarding their salaries. Educators said that they had been previously told that they would earn raises so long as they furthered their education by completing professional development courses. But the district later refused to follow through on that agreement, saying that it lacked the funds to do so. And reportedly, the consequences of a strike here could have a devastating impact for the school district, which is the fifth largest in the county. Now, in response to this news, the district filed an emergency court motion to block the strike and have a judge issue an order against it. And there, if the order was imposed, the union could have faced fines of up to $50,000 a day. But still, Clark County teachers felt that they had no choice but to take a stand here. And while all of this was happening, you had some very, very frustrated students. With many local students who were outraged about this situation, including 16-year-old Jillian Sullivan taking their frustration out on TikTok. Sullivan, whose mom has worked for the district for more than 20 years, uploaded a video on the app where she explained the situation, saying that the district would not pay the teachers who had, quote, spent the past three years earning enough credits out of their own pockets, spending extra hours outside of school to earn credits to get a raise and adding personally i don't think this is fair and i'm kind of like sick of our district thinking it's okay to walk all over teachers and students all of the time so if you're sick of this too and um you want respect for yourself as a student but also for your teachers please strike september 5th because i'm done and you should be too like teachers deserve more respect than that and it's disgusting and within days, Sullivan's video went viral. There was a lot of support, many also commenting about similar issues that their own school districts are facing. Also in another post, Sullivan responded to users who said that their districts were just as bad, if not worse, arguing that the entire school system in the United States is flawed and encouraged all students to skip school on September 5th. Her posts also made their way onto Twitter where they picked up more steam, more support, more praise. Also inspiring other students to upload similar TikToks, including another student in her district, 17-year-old Leonardo Bueno. We should also be speaking uh, up about uh, teachers being underpaid and not getting their salary. Teachers put their life and, you know, the whole dedication in teaching us because they are teaching the future of this country. And while many seemed prepared to actually participate in this student and teacher strike, those plans have since been called off. And that's because late Wednesday, the Clark County School District and the Clark County Education Association said that they had reached a tentative agreement to resolve the issue. That agreement reportedly including a salary increase for the educators who completed their professional development program, as well as a 3% raise and more funding for health insurance. Now keep in mind, according to the AP, the deal still needs to be ratified by union executives and district trustees. However, right now it does appear that both sides expect no issues on approving this move. As far as my reaction to this story, I know that there's going to be a debate as far as how effective, right, the, the students speaking up on TikTok and then that going to Twitter, how how effective that was. But personally there, I will argue very. It took an otherwise just local story and they turned it into a national issue. And while yes, 78% of the content on TikTok right now are various people hitting the woe, I want to say that in the most boomer way possible, I would personally love and I expect to see more of this since TikTok is just the medium of a certain generation. And so it just makes sense that this group is also gonna share information that way. Hell, I've actually seen people kind of talking about the news. Granted, they meme it, but it still conveys that information well. And also, I guess just kind of final note, good on all these students for actually supporting their teachers. I feel like teachers, in addition to being kind of underappreciated, get shit on a lot, so it's kind of awesome to see that support. But, of course, like with everything we talk about, I'd love to know your thoughts on this. Then, in news that I think is actually awesome for online entertainment, YouTube has announced that as of September 24th, any of their new YouTube originals, their YouTube specials, they will now be available for free with ads. And notably there, right after the 24th, you have the new season of Liza On Demand, of course, starring Liza Koshy, released on the 25th, as well as reportedly the drama Impulse on October 16th, along with free windows to catch up with each series for a season. Also, as of today, the fantastically well-reviewed, and I personally like, season one of Cobra Kai is now out there for everyone to receive, but it also appears that there's a little bit of a catch, but maybe kind of not really. There does appear to be a little bit of a windowing angle. As Deadline explains, for instance, premium members will continue to be able to binge the full new seasons of Impulse and Liza On Demand, while one new episode will be rolled out weekly for ad-supported or AVOD viewers. Additionally, YouTube premium subscribers will have exclusive access to director's cuts and bonus content for YouTube originals when available. And personally, 
I'm very fascinated to see how this plays out. Right? Because I feel like YouTube's done a good job of bringing big advertisers, big brands to the table. And then, you know, YouTube was kind of hiding some of the, the I'm not gonna say best content, but the, the content that they threw the most money at behind a paywall. And when you were looking at episodes that were not behind a paywall, like the, the first episode of season one of Cobra Kai, those numbers were wild. And it makes you kind of wonder, well, how many people actually paid then for the subscription to watch the rest of the season versus maybe just falling off or pirating it instead. Which I will say regarding pirating, it'll be interesting to see what happens with this new move for YouTube, right? Because the people that don't have YouTube premium, right? They, they get the episodes once a week. Each one of those videos also serves as kind of an ad to say, hey, if you want more, you can just pay for a subscription. By the way, when you sign up, it's free. All right, so how many people are to go, ah, I could wait for this versus, oh man, I have to subscribe to YouTube premium now versus, oh man, I got to pirate this now. It's going to be very interesting to see because it is somewhat of a unique release schedule. But with all that said, and I'm very fascinated by your response to this, what do you think about this move? And what do you think that we will see? Will it, will it boost subscriptions, pirating, both, neither? I know my kind of viewing habits, but I'd love to know your thoughts here. But from that, I want to share some stuff I love today and today in awesome brought to you by fullsale.edu slash Phil. And Full Sail, if you don't know, specializes in entertainment, media, technology, and the arts. At Full Sail, they're committed to hands-on education you can study online or attend their Florida campus. And best of all, they offer accelerated degree programs. And actually, a good number of people from the nation and even past employees of mine have been Full Sail graduates. Hell, actually, even my sister is starting up this year. And at Full Sail, you get the knowledge and hands-on experience, but you also get to connect with successful grads and students to build your network. Full Sail Special Blend has produced a community of inspiring, creative people who push each other to do amazing things, work on and make amazing projects come to life. And hey, if you want more info, you want to check this out, be sure to head over to fullsail.edu slash phil and check it out. And the first bit of awesome today is we put out an extra news video today. We took a look at, tried to condense and explain the U.S. and China trade war, you know, tariffs, manipulation, theft. And after today's show, I highly recommend you check it out. It'll be one of the top links down below. And then we had HBO putting out a very interesting trailer for what happened on September 11th. Based on the trailer, it looks like a look back on that event of, of people kind of sharing the story for, for kids who weren't old enough to really remember it, which I think is a very interesting and important angle on it. Wired gave us a scientist explaining how a fire tornado forms. Marvel Entertainment gave us journey through the history of Marvel comics. First We Feast gave us Marquez Brown Lee and Casey Neistat playing Truth or Dab. Binging with Babish gave us Pan Pizza. Bo gave us some famous people getting ready for the VMAs videos. And then the phil.chrono.gg partner game of the day today is actually really special. We got a game at launch. It is Heave Ho. It is a weird, quirky, fantastic game where the goal is just not to fall. You can play with up to four players. And best of all, if you grab it using my link and my store before 9 a.m. tomorrow and or while supplies last, you can get it for 15% off, just $8.50. And if you want to see the full versions of everything I just shared, the secret secret link of the day, really anything at all. Links as always are in the description down below. And then let's talk about the news around James Comey. And if you've seen this story pop up today, you, you've probably seen it described with kind of one of two headlines, right? Uh, Buzzfeed News put out James Comey won't face charges for sharing memos about his interactions with Trump. And you had places like Fox News with the headline, read DOJ watchdog's list of all the times ex-FBI boss Comey broke the rules. Or like this headline from The Guardian saying Comey violated FBI policies by leaking Trump memos, Justice Department rules, right? And the thing is, all those things are actually accurate. It's just kind of interesting to see who leads with what. So yes, today the Inspector General of the Justice Department released a report. And among other things, it says, quote, the responsibility to protect sensitive law enforcement information falls in large part to the employees of the FBI who have access to it through their daily duties. Former Director Comey failed to live up to this responsibility by not safeguarding sensitive information obtained during the course of his FBI employment and by using it to create public pressure for official action. Comey set a dangerous example for the over 35,000 current FBI employees and the many thousands more former FBI employees who similarly have access to or knowledge of non-public information. With the memo going on to say, Comey had several other lawful options available to him to advocate for the appointment of a special counsel, which he told us was his goal in making the disclosure. And the memo then adding, what was not permitted was the unauthorized disclosure of sensitive investigative information obtained during the course of FBI employment in order to achieve a personally desired outcome. And ultimately, with all of this, the DOJ ended up declining to charge Comey. This because, quote, they didn't believe there was evidence to show Comey knew and intended to violate laws on handling classified information. And it's been interesting watching the reaction from this because I I've seen people kind of on, on both sides of this issue taking a victory lap. For example, you had Comey tweeting out that the DOJ IG found no evidence, adding, I don't need a public apology from those who defamed me, but a quick message with a sorry we lied about you would be nice. Then adding, and to all those who've spent two years talking about me, quote, going to jail or being a, quote, liar and a leaker, ask yourselves why you still trust people who gave you bad info for so long, including the president. But on the other side, you had people like Representative Jim Jordan tweeting, now we know why 
Comey didn't want to prosecute Clinton, he didn't see a problem mishandling sensitive information. After clearing her, he did it too. Comey, like Clinton, thinks he's above the law. We also saw a tweet from President Trump's account reading, Perhaps never in the history of our country has someone been more thoroughly disgraced and excoriated than James Comey in the just-released Inspector General's report. He should be ashamed of himself. But yeah, that's a story as it is right now, and of course, I'd love to know your thoughts on this. And then, let's talk about Brexit. It's been a minute since we talked about this. And specifically today, we're gonna to be talking about Boris Johnson suspending British Parliament ahead of Brexit and why this move has outraged a ton of people. And a quick, oversimplified recap here to get things started. The United Kingdom voted to leave the European Union back in June of 2016. Right after that vote, you had then Prime Minister David Cameron resigning, Theresa May then stepping up to take the position. She originally planned to take the UK out of the EU by March 2019, but of course, uh, we were still talking about that, so you know that did not happen. The government tried to withdraw in January, notably that easily failed. Two more votes then failed in March, this largely because of a dispute over the border between the Independent Republic of Ireland and the UK-controlled Northern Ireland. May then asked for an extension to the withdrawal agreement between the UK and the EU, to which the EU said that you have until the end of October. Long story short there, May ends up resigning in June. And then, a series of votes later, Boris Johnson took over as Prime Minister in July once his party elected him as the Conservative leader. Johnson said he'd negotiate for a better withdrawal deal with the EU, but the EU has said that it will not change the deal. Johnson has also said that they'll move through Brexit with or without a deal, which has been a massively contentious topic. This because many experts warn that in addition to other things, a no deal could lead to shortages of food, gas, and medicine. Economists also fearing that a no deal Brexit could tank the economy. And all of that simplified, condensed mush brings us to yesterday when Johnson asked Queen Elizabeth to suspend Parliament. Now as a figurehead, the Queen must remain politically neutral, but it's formality for the Prime Minister to ask the Queen before suspending Parliament. And of note there, it would have been seen as a very unusual move for her to deny his request, which is likely why she granted it. Now, Parliament was already scheduled for a three and a half week break starting September 16th, but now Johnson has tacked on an extra week to that recess. And all of that is important because it means that Parliament has less time to actually reach a deal to leave the EU. Also because historically, Parliament usually convenes in times of national crisis. In fact, some had even speculated that Parliament might have tried to cancel the initial recess, right, the three and a half weeks, to allow for more time to talk about Brexit. But instead, we saw this move from Johnson, which actually regarding that, even some in Johnson's own conservative party said that the move could be challenged in court, which regarding this move by Johnson, you may be asking why he would do this. And according to Johnson, it's to give his government time to lay out a quote, new, bold, and ambitious domestic agenda after Brexit. But limiting parliament also means that lawmakers have less time to block a no deal Brexit. However, parliament is expected to try to block a no deal Brexit in their limited time within the next two weeks. And in fact, today, Labor Party leader Jeremy Corbyn said that he would try to block the suspension with legislation. Corbyn has also said that he plans to hold a vote of no confidence against Johnson, to which actually President Trump jumped into the mix. Tweeting would be very hard for Jeremy Corbyn, the leader of Britain's Labour Party, to seek a no confidence vote against new Prime Minister Boris Johnson, especially in light of the fact that Boris is exactly what the UK has been looking for and will prove to be a great one. Love UK. So there was that. Also, uh, so far there's already been an attempt in the Scottish courts to reverse this suspension. Also, we've seen a big reaction from the people. As of recording this video, an online petition requesting the Parliament not shut down has garnered around 1.5 million signatures. People have also taken to the streets protesting, reportedly chanting things like no one voted for Boris and stop the coup, which actually on social media, stop the coup was trending. And there you had several pointing to a past statement by Johnson saying that he wouldn't suspend parliament. In fact, in that statement, he actually called such an action arcane. So you had people saying things like you can't trust a word this liar says. This isn't about left, right, center, leave or remain. This is about ensuring that democracy can never be put on pause when an unelected politician finds it inconvenient. Which I, I will say on that note, Johnson was elected elected, but that election was only decided by about 139,000 votes from conservative party members. Also along with your everyday folk, you had some celebrities like Hugh Grant jumping into the mix, blasting Johnson by saying, you will not fuck with my children's future. You will not destroy the freedoms my grandfather fought two world wars to defend. Fuck off, you over-promoted rubber bath toy. Britain is revolted by you and your little gang of masturbatory prefects. We've also notably seen some lawmakers resign today, that including Scotland's conservative party leader, Ruth Davidson. Although of note there, in her letter of resignation, she points to the birth of her son as one of the main reasons for resigning, though she did mention feeling conflicted over Brexit. So news outlets in the UK have linked the timing of her resignation to Parliament suspension. You also had George Young resigning from Parliament's upper house. And in a letter, he said that Johnson, quote, risks undermining the fundamental role of Parliament at a critical time in our history and reinforces the view that the government may not have the confidence of the House for its Brexit policy. You also had David Liddington saying this was, quote, not a good way to do democracy and sets a very bad precedent for future governments. Also reportedly telling the BBC that if the opposition Labour Party had done something similar, some of my Tory colleagues who are cheering at the moment would be turning purple with rage. But you also had some supporters of Johnson essentially saying that this outrage is kind of faux outrage. People like leader of the House of Commons, Jacob Rees-Mogg, adding, I don't think there is any attempt to railroad. And specifically calling the big reaction to this news the candy floss of outrage. But ultimately, at the moment of filming this video, that is where we are. It's gonna be a very interesting couple of months. And of course, I always love to know everyone's
everyone's thoughts on this, but if you live in the, the EU, if you live in the UK, I'd really, really love to know your thoughts on what's going to happen. And that's where we're going to end today's show. And hey, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button. Also, if you're new here, you want more, be sure to hit that subscribe button and definitely click that bell to turn on notifications. Also, if you're not 100% filled in, we have that brand new news deep dive, or maybe you want to check out the brand new podcast. You can click or tap right there to watch either of those right now. But with that said, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love your faces, and I'll see you next time. Uh, as a recording. All around me are from